I'm going to show you how to configure Superbase Auth to store session data in cookies rather than local storage. If you're not sure why you would need cookies when working with the Next.js app router, I recommend you click that card above to learn more about clients, servers, cookies, RLS, but in this one, we're going to implement authentication. Let's get into it. So here I have a server component that is fetching to-dos from Superbase. We have a login component, which is rendering out a sign up, sign in, and sign out button, which are just calling functions above that are basically just calling those functions in Superbase. So superbase.auth.sign up, superbase.auth.sign in with password, and superbase.auth.sign out. And we've written policies to allow a user to insert, select, or update their own to dos, but something's going wrong in this process. If we disable RLS, you'll see we're getting back all of those to-dos, but two of these belong to a different user. So we should only be seeing this top one, which belongs to our user. So if we switch RLS on again, we'll see we're getting back our empty array. And that's because by default, Superbase Auth stores our session data in local storage, but we need to configure it to use cookies. So this session data can be sent along with our request to Superbase from our server component. So let's start by using npm to install at superbase slash auth dash helpers dash next.js. And once that's finished, we can run our development server again. And then over in our login component, we just need to find where we're creating our Superbase client. So this is using the create client function from at Superbase slash Superbase JS. We instead want to create this client inside our component by calling the create client component client function, which comes in from that at Superbase slash auth helpers next JS package. And we can now get rid of this one and also our import from Superbase JS. And now for our sign up function, we need to pass an additional parameter. So we have email and password. We then need to pass options. And this is going to be an object. We then want to set email redirect to to the URL HTTP colon slash slash localhost over port 3000 slash auth slash callback. And this is because the sign up flow is actually a few steps. When they click this button, it triggers a new user to be created in Superbase. That then sends an email confirmation to the user to make sure this is a real user. When they click the confirm your sign up button, this then goes back to Superbase to say, well, this user is a real user. And then Superbase needs somewhere to redirect that user. So we're redirecting them back to our application and to this slash auth slash callback route that is then going to be passed a unique auth code, which we need to exchange for the user's session. So let's create this route. So under app, we want a new file. So that's going to be at auth slash callback slash route dot TS. So this is going to be a route handler. We can then export an async function that can handle a get request. It will be passed a request, which is of type request. And then we want to get the request URL by calling new URL and passing it our requests URL. We then want to get the code out of that URL. So we can say request URL dot search params dot get and pass it the string code. And then if we have a code, then we want to send it back to Superbase. So let's create a new Superbase client by calling the create route handler client function, which again comes in from those auth helpers. And this one requires us to pass in this cookies function. And so we can import that function from next slash headers and pass it along to our create route handler client function. And now we can await a call to superbase.auth.exchange code for session and pass it our code. And then we want to redirect the user back to our application so we can return a next response, which comes in from next slash server dot redirect and pass it our request URL dot origin. So basically just the landing page for our application, but this can be any URL. So now if we go back to our login component and this path will work when we're running locally, but it won't work in production. So we can make this a little bit more resilient by using our locations origin. So this will be localhost over port 3000 when we're running locally, and then whatever our production URL is when we're in production. So if we go back over to the browser and refresh and click this sign in button, we can see that our auth token from Superbase is appearing under cookies rather than local storage. But when we refresh, we're still getting this empty array back from Superbase. So what's going on here? Well, back over in our application, we've configured our login component to use cookies, but we haven't configured our server component. And that's what's actually making that request to Superbase. So we just need to create a new Superbase client by calling create server component client, which again comes in from that auth helpers package. And this one also takes that cookies function. And so we can import that above and get rid of this unused create client and also that import from Superbase JS. And now if we go back to to our application, we're not only seeing our to-dos, but only our to-dos for our signed in user. And again, if we sign out, they disappear. Awesome. 
So we've configured Superbase to use cookies for client components, server components, and route handlers. If you want to take it one step further, I recommend you check out this video right here where we implement protected routes. So these are special routes that can be only visited by users who are signed in. But until next time, keep building cool stuff.